Hi, and welcome to episode 107 of the weekly Google Cloud Platform podcast. I'm Mark Mandel, and I'm here with my colleague, Melanie Warwick. How are you doing this morning, Melanie? Good morning, Mark. It's nice and early where I am, but where are you? How early is it where you are? It's, uh, was it? Well, it's actually almost 7 a.m. It just feels really early when it's still dark. That's pretty early. Where are you at today? <laughs> I am currently in the Google Montreal office. It's almost 10 o'clock here in the morning, so it's not as early for me as it is for you. Yeah, exactly. I'm back in San Francisco. So, uh, yeah, this week we have the band back together, so to speak. We did. We got the band back together just in time for the end of the year to do a wrap up of all the things. It was a really good interview, actually, to, to get our friends Husk back in the uh, in the recording studio. And we also got our director, Greg Wilson, to join us as well to give his insights. Yeah. Uh, and to follow on from that, this week we're going to have our question of the week is, what have been your highlights for 2017? What have been your favorite things? Yes. We'll give a, a nice little highlight for how our year went. And before all of that, of course, we need to jump into what are the cool things of the week. And these are the last cool things of the week that we'll have for the year, which we were just chatting Whoa. about when we were pulling them together, because we have all the things we want to talk about. Cool. So I tell you what, you just came back from NIPS and you have a bunch of stuff around machine learning. Why don't you get stuck into that? Okay. I just wanted to highlight a few things in terms of the fact that, you know, there were a number of really great speakers. Most of the content, I've actually posted this on my Twitter account, that most of the content was actually recorded and is online. And there's uh, links for that, which we can also share on our blog. Uh, But there was a talk that was given by Jeff Dean and his talk was titled Machine Learning for Systems and Systems for Machine Learning. Uh, and part of it references, you know, some of the work that's been done and, and the success stories that they've had around the TPUs uh, version two, as well as how they're applying things like reinforcement learning to help with like device placement. And they recently released a paper that actually shows how they're using indexes and specifically uh, machine learn indexes that can replace things like B trees and hash indexes and bloom filters. I believe that may have been recorded and posted, and if we can find it, we will definitely share it. Otherwise, uh, we'll definitely share the link for the paper. And one other thing I want to give a shout out to the fact that uh, Fei-Fei Li, who's the chief scientist of Cloud AI and ML, spoke, and she uh, gave some insights in terms of some of her recent work around uh, machine learning as it applies to health. Uh, Also something that if we can locate any kind of slides from that, we'll, we'll definitely share it. Excellent. Yeah, so uh, continuing on the machine learning path, there's a new open source project called Kubeflow. Um, I can talk about the Kubernetes part. You can talk about the machine learning part. Uh, I think that probably works well. So it's a project dedicated to making machine learning on Kubernetes easy, portable, and scalable, which I think is kind of cool. It's uh, basically based on Kubernetes and does machine learning things. I don't know about the machine learning part. Do you know anything about it, Melanie? Uh, I know that it helps make machine learning easier. That's pretty much what I know right now. But uh, yeah, people should definitely check that out. Yeah, so definitely check that out if you're looking for a good portable way to do uh, Kubernetes and machine learning. And we have a link to the GitHub repo for Kuplo as well as we are going to share a link um, for Y Combinator where there was some good content and sharing of information around that. Nice. Uh, Since we're on the Kubernetes train, I'll bring up as well, there's a a new tool. We never get off the train, do we? I never get off the train. Someone was making fun of me on Twitter about it the other day. No, I never. Um, About how much I like to talk about Kubernetes, because I do. Of course you do. (laughs) If you're using uh, Kubernetes on us, so GKE, we just released a a new dashboard on cloud.google.com on the cloud console that gives you better introspection of what's happening inside your cluster. It's actually fairly reminiscent if you've ever used the dashboard UI that comes built with Kubernetes. But as we were talking about last week, you may necessarily want to turn that off for security reasons, but this still gives you a nice visualization access to see things like what pods are running, how much CPU they're using, what services are available, things like that, Uh, access to logs directly, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, So if you haven't had a look at cloud.google.com and you've been running a GKE cluster, uh, have another look. You might find the new feature is kind of cool. Great. Well, I think that covers it for what we wanted to share for cool things of the week. And I think it's time to go ahead and get started with what our interview overview of the year looks like. Sounds good. Let's go do it. All right. So today on today's podcast, I'm I'm here to welcome uh, Greg Wilson, who is our leader in charge. <laughs> and I've got Mark Mandel, of course, who's my co-host, and Francesc Campoy Flores, who Hello. is our ex Googler, <laughs> who's returned from the dead of of going off to another company. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just for today, <laughs> holiday, holidays in Brazil and Mexico. So yeah, yeah, really hard life. Yeah. Hard life. Hard <laughs> yeah. life. What's it feel like wearing a guest badge today? 
It is weird. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, still access to food. So good. Yeah. Good. yeah. <laughs> so on today's podcast, we want to basically do an overview of the year. We're going to go back and look back over time from the 2017 and see what was our favorites and what was. Well, actually, we should talk about what maybe are some of the funny moments, too. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. <that's>... And Mark. <laughs> You should definitely lead this off with, like, what are some of the top five downloads? Because you guys have been here longer than I have. Oh, yeah. So, first of all, thank you you very much to Greg and, like, Frances for coming back. Thank you. Yeah, (laughs) it's lovely to have you back. We have the the new people. We have Melanie. We have Frances from the history. I thought you were going to say old people. (laughs) Dude. (laughs) No, that sounds good. That's my job. um, (laughs) What's great? So, actually, first of all, uh, people who haven't met you, Greg, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and, like, what you do here at Google as well? You have a new title now as well. That's right. Uh, So, I'm Director of Developer Relations for Cloud Platform. Nice. What does that mean? What does that mean? I'm still figuring that out after three and a half years. So developer advocacy, uh, multiple developer programs, developer programs engineering, all the things to make developers happy reports up uh, through our org. So we... uh, We're the receptacle for... We're the receptacle. Are we we happy? Is this successful? (laughs) Apparently it's successful if you were promoted. So we um, do things like, you know, get the word out at events. This year, I think this team has done over 600 events going out and meeting developers where they are and let them know what we're doing here. We also do a lot of content. We do a lot of uh, driving better developer experience with the products. We not only advocate to the outside world on behalf of Google, we advocate to the product teams on behalf of the outside world, which actually I think we all take that part of the job even more seriously. So we have folks that participate in open source projects with Google, work with the product teams to improve the overall developer experience of the platform. What are you up to these days, Francesc? So, so you're director. I'm VP of the That's right. Relations. There you go. <laughs> and Double promo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm the only person in developer relations too. So you, know. <laughs> <laughs> you are your own boss. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and also my own team. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I left Google, as you all know, one month ago. Uh, November 1st was my last day and also my first day in the new company. And I'm working for a company called Sourced. And basically what we're trying to do is Applying machine learning to source code to build tools on top of that. To do that, there's a lot of infrastructure going on, and there's a lot of tooling that needs to exist, and we're working on building those. But then also we're working with like researchers and people that are really, really good on like machine learning, which I'm not, to build really interesting tools. Like uh, There's a demo I'm working on, which is like, do not reinvent the wheel linter, that tells you that the code you're writing actually looks a lot like something from the standard library. Use that function instead. Things like that, which are not really doable without machine learning. So it's really interesting. Nice. That's good. That's a good problem to be solving. Yeah, it is. It is, it is very interesting. And the good thing is that it's also a platform, like Google Cloud Platform. So my job is still kind of similar on the way. It's like, like building cool things to show the power of the platform, which means that you end up building cool things. So, so it's I, I'm, I've been having lots of fun. I'm yeah. glad you're having a good time. And how's it feel to be back? It is really good. It is uh, weirdly familiar. Does it feel like you <laughs> yeah. ever left? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah, I've, I've been on every episode until now too, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's kind of sad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. People actually, now I think about it, listeners will not have missed you because yeah. you haven't been gone. Yeah. Okay. I, maybe we should know do this. <laughs> yeah. Are you still uh, you still doing a lot with Go? Are you still close to Go? Yes, I'm still doing Go. I'm still doing Just a Funk. Like all of the infrastructure on the company is running Go. Yeah. And uh, there's packages that they've open sourced that that's actually how I discovered the company, like GoGet, which is like the most used Git package written mm-hmm. Go, uh, written by them. So, awesome. so it's still a lot of Go going on, uh, which is I'm happy about. Yep. Well, since we have you here again, Francesc and, and Greg, why don't we go back in time? Back in time. <laughs> do, we, do we put in sound effects right here? Not, not the the harp. Where's our harp? We go back in time. Go back in time. <laughs> um, and talk a little bit about like the inception of the podcast. Uh, it's been two years. We passed 100 episodes together, which was fantastic. Greg was there in the beginning. Why don't we? Let's hear from Greg's perspective. I'm kind of curious uh-huh. because, because we know the story, but what does he know? Yeah, <laughs> because, because yeah. Francesc, you and I, we sort of sat down over over coffee one day and we we're like, we should do a podcast. And then we came uh-huh. to Greg and said, Hey, Greg, we think we might want to do a podcast. What do you reckon? <laughs> well, and what's funny? I found some slides from an offsite that we did as a team in 2015. And uh, 
one of the slides in that was we need to find new ways to reach our audiences. And I gave examples, and the second example was podcast. So because of that, I'm taking full credit for the entire <laughs> podcast. <laughs> but anyway, the two of you came to me and proposed a podcast, which I was super excited about. But I distinctly remember having a huge amount of concern over your proposal to do it weekly. And I thought that was absolutely insane. It was. <laughs> uh, and I tried to talk you out of it. I remember I said, weekly is never going to work. You guys will do like 12 episodes and that'll be fun, and then it'll turn into work, and then by episode 20, you're going to be out of ideas and telling me you want to go monthly or quarterly. But I was absolutely wrong on that. Um, I realized when you hit episode 50 and now episode 100 and whatever, it's, it's really incredibly impressive how absolutely regular you've kept it and kept it exciting and fun. So that's uh, hats off to you guys. It's pretty awesome. I'm pretty excited also. I just want to say Melanie's got some pretty cool stuff lined up for next year. I'm excited yeah. about that, too. I'm yeah. looking forward to especially the first episode. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I'm uh, super excited about Melanie joining. When I first heard Melanie was getting involved with the podcast, Mark and Frances were telling me a story of how, I guess, y'all were having lunch together. Yep. And just, you know, having regular Google work conversation around various technical things and talking about AI. And you're so fascinated in Melanie's description of it and her passion for it. And said, hey, let's go up and record a podcast episode. And so a few weeks later, when Frances made the decision that he was going to go try a new adventure it was like the obvious choice because she was so good on it and it's oh, like, yeah. okay that's right so <laughs> I was born, I was born that's right. to do this yeah, that's right i mean it, it really just felt completely natural that, well yeah of course she should be the co-host so. yeah i think it's mark that said maybe melanie and my reaction was like oh yeah of course yeah absolutely and when we yeah. told you it was like oh yeah of course absolutely it's yeah like, it's like it's like, a no-brainer yeah, yeah. Duh. just so i'm clear there was no maybe there i was definitely melanie oh, definitely. of course, yeah. of course definitely. you were yeah. i know we're yeah. gonna we're gonna really have a good time together yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i'm super excited about where that's headed i'm super excited about where that's headed as well and greg is this your first time on the podcast? Yeah, I don't know how I was not able to get myself in the podcast, even though I stood outside the door and knocked and begged. But <laughs> um, please, we had to get rid of Francesca so that you could come in the door. That's right. So now I know who was blocking me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. But uh, so <laughs> yeah, this is my first time, but I'm, I was excited to be part of it. I wanted to wait till there was a certain traffic level before I appeared. <laughs> before you were, you <laughs> found reasonable. it acceptable, uh, yeah, and now reasonable. you're like, right. after Vin Surf, you're like, yeah, I think it's time <laughs> yeah. for me to get on yeah. there. Okay, it's good enough for Vent, good enough for yeah. Me. Yeah. <laughs> Well, with that said, why don't we go ahead and dive into the uh, top five that we found that were very popular within the community. So, actually, Mark, yeah, so do you guys want to jump into that? Sure. sure. Cool. So, number five, speaking of which... Where's the drum roll button? <laughs> uh, number five is Vin Surf. That was an amazing episode. So... Like, if you're going to listen to any episode, I feel, from the podcast, you should listen to that episode. Yeah. 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 Uh, I also have a recording of our faces without the audio. Oh, uh, that's hilarious. During that hangout. Because, like, the conversation was amazing. Yep. But the subtext of the conversation was even better. At some point, Vin Cerf, uh, so Mark asks a question, and Vin Cerf <laughs> goes, that's a very good question. And you could see that Mark was incredibly happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was highlight of his career getting like very good question from Vince Herb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Your life has been perfect now. You have nothing else you need to achieve. Yeah. 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 yeah Vince Herb thinks I ask good question. So yeah, totally. Um if if you aren't familiar with Vin, uh he's one of the founders of the internet, basically the thing that allows us to do this. And I still my favorite response of all time from him was when asking him, Hey, <laughs> you know you're building this brand new distributed network were you at the time did you think that you were going to change the world with whatever this thing was and how it's going to come about and he was just like oh yeah totally yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah absolutely yeah. was very aware of that how did you guys get him I sent him an email going like hey Vin Surf uh, so we met long time ago at a cafe at Google this is a selfie of the two of us <laughs> and uh, so I thought that we're doing the Google Cloud Platform podcast without the internet that you invented Google would not exist the cloud would not exist and podcast would not exist so can it make sense that you guess for episode 100 what do you think and he was like okay nice so yeah I was like, <laughs> who, knew, who knew how valuable a selfie would be Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah Keep you should all always selfies. take selfies. Yeah. <laughs> Keep all the selfies. So what did you like most about the episode? 
outside of the fact that you were both extremely excited and you have these great videos of you watching it. The most amazing thing was that we were asking questions about what we thought the future was mm. and he was mentioning this like like for instance we were talking about like, well, have you thought about in the future we'll need interplanetary communications and things like that. Will T C P A P be enough? And he was like, Oh no, no, it will not because the ping is too big. But we already solved this with the JPL protocol that we invented while working with NASA. I'm like Okay, <laughs> that the future for us is something that he has already considered and mostly solved, which was amazing. It's the power of predicting and and actually even adapting before anything happens to to the future is, is just amazing. All right, what's number four? Number four was a container engine with Hen Goldberg. I've done a couple of episodes with Hen. She's pretty amazing. She is really, really, really good. And that episode was really good because it actually uh, helped us understand not only the like what is container engine, but what is the difference between container en- engine, Kubernetes, what is the community, and things like that. You and know it's now Kubernetes engine, right? And now it's Kubernetes engine, that's true. Yes. Well, it, the, t- the title the t- of the, the episode time is with container, container engine. engine so. sure. Which is good because now GKE actually makes sense. That's what we were saying. Yeah. But yeah, it was a really good episode, especially because uh, she was also talking about the community and things like that. So it was, from a technical point of view, really interesting. But also, uh, I mean, she's a really good speaker. Actually, yeah, it was um, one thing I really enjoyed about that interview was talking about Google's involvement in the open source process of mm-hmm. building this project that involves multiple parties and how all that sort of flows together. I Governance that was really and, yeah. yeah, really, really cool. And what's number three? Number three is... <clears throat> oh, that's right. We can skip that one. Yeah, this we can skip that. Episode three, what's AI with Melanie Warwick? Warwick? Yeah, I've not heard about her. Have you heard about her? Was, I haven't heard about Melanie, her. Melanie, what was that episode about? You I can probably know. tell us. I'm, I'm not really sure. I didn't listen to it. That, that's actually the episode that Greg was mentioning where we were having lunch at Google and decided that this conversation is really interesting, should be a podcast episode, and we just made it happen the same day. We did. We, we were like, when can we schedule this? And I was like, now? Let's yeah. do this now. So what, what is the difference between AI and ML? Uh, there's no difference now. <laughs> Listen to the podcast. Uh, yeah. Now, the difference between AI and L- ML, just for the record, yes, ML is a set of algorithms that are used to help with AI. What is the buzzword one? Is it ML, AI, or is there something else? Is it de- deep learning? Oh, the buzzwords are all the buzzwords. Deep They're learning, all... okay, AI, good. ML, um, big data, all of it. Bur- there's a lot of buzzwords, and it, it's used to make people understand really quickly what they're trying to talk about without necessarily having to dive too deep. The reality is you need to dive a little deeper. If you want more of this, episode number 93. I know, exactly. <laughs> Check out episode 93. All right, so number two. Episode 91, the future of media with machine learning with Amit Pandey. And this was really interesting because I really did not know what we were going into. Uh, it was you, Mark, that proposed the episode. Yeah. Yeah, I saw Amit speak. Uh, it was actually at the New York Summit. Uh, he did a presentation on basically practical applications for machine learning for the broadcast industry, so film and te- television, uh, in, in a variety of circumstances, especially including sports. So this was episode was a really practical, like, this is how we can use this thing now to help people out when they do broadcast television. So, like... Uh, automatic highlights for sports games, um, cameras that follow interesting action that happen, things like that. Yeah, it was it was really it was really 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 interesting. And they also, I believe, talked about uh, generating content too, which is an interesting. Mm, yeah. thing. applications in general is is a constant question in the space. How how are these algorithms actually being used in real world problems? So it's valuable. All right. Last but not least, number one. Number one, uh, of course, episode 88 with uh, Tim Hawking talking about Kubernetes 1.7. Yeah, so it's also, I want to kind of point out one thing here, which I think is kind of interesting, that Kubernetes shows up twice in our Uh, top five. Yeah, I mean, Kubernetes was basically like 50% of our content, I feel. (laughs) (laughs) In every episode, we've talked about Kubernetes in one way or the other. Questions of the week. and No, also, people use it. Yeah, but I think it kind of does show the impact of that project, which is kind of interesting. I think there's there's two factors at play here with this episode. One, Kubernetes is super cool and interesting. People love it. Two, everyone loves Tim Hawking. Oh, yes. It was it was really amazing how uh, it went onto Hacker News. Uh, someone put it on, on Hacker News. And it was the first time that I've seen people commenting on Hacker News. Not, I mean, commenting not really about the content. Happens often. But <laughs> talking actually about Tim, saying, I just wanted to comment that uh, I know Tim Hawking from school. And he's an amazing guy. Like people like that, just saying that he's an amazing yep. guy in general, and and that and he is really, uh, and 
the episode is amazing because he talks a little bit about well, what is coming up and everything, but also his involvement with the project, with the project from the beginning and stuff yep. like that. Which you know, his point of view is. He was one of the founders. Yeah. yeah. So congratulations, Tim. Well nice. done. Nice job. You won the year. <laughs> you won the year. <laughs> we sent him a new T-shirt or something. We what, probably you should. Mean, you mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think you said you said a new T-shirt. I don't think we sent him a, a T-shirt. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> we should have sent him a T-shirt. Or at least some point. stickers. We, I've got yeah. a lot of stickers. <laughs> I was gonna say, do you guys ever send out T-shirts? I don't think I got a T-shirt. Uh, there's a box downstairs, I think. I think it's empty. No. I think we finished it all. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. So now that we've talked about the popular ones based on downloads, what are some of the ones you enjoyed the most in terms of this year? Greg? I always enjoy the ones that bring real customers into it, you know, reaching outside of Google, the customers. So at Niantic, um, that episode I thought was fantastic. Plus, I had a lot of interest in um, how they were using our platform and, and how you scale something of that magnitude. Uh, Home Depot, Broad Institute, you know, all those were, were fascinating to me. Yeah, and real world applications are, are crucial. Yeah, and it's, you know, one thing that's always fun about being part of a software platform is you think you imagine everything that people can do with it, and then you find someone outside that looks at it completely differently, and then they show you new ways to use your, your platform. And that, I, don't know, I always love that. Yeah, and I agree, with, especially with that podcast that you guys did at the beginning of the year uh, covering Pokemon Go, and just hearing some of the numbers in terms of what they'd achieved so far, in yeah. terms of uh, at the time that people had walked about 8.7 billion kilometers, and <laughs> yeah. uh, that was, what was it, you could walk 200 times around the Earth is the equivalent. Yep. Yeah, for me, the, the coolest part of that episode was when Edward Wu uh, was talking about the impact that Pokemon Go had in the world, and specifically on his family. Yes, and he was talking about how his dad uh, had. Uh, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it was yeah, sure it's diabetes. diabetes. Yeah. yeah, diabetes. So he had to take some drugs and walk around and everything. And he didn't really want to walk around that much. And since Pokemon Go, he has walking so much that he was actually taking less drugs. Nice. And that kind of impact yeah. is. Like, you know, yeah. like thinking that your work on Google Cloud Platform enables Pokemon Go to help someone with their diabetes, I'm very happy about that's, that. Yeah, that's yeah. like my, one of my favorite stories is that story. Yeah. Nice. All right. What about you guys? What are some of your favorites? So uh, for me, I'm going to go with something completely selfish. So we've launched many, many products during the year, and it is hard to keep up. <laughs> mm. So when we had product managers coming and explaining what their product was, it, it is really useful for us and for our audience, but specifically for me, because then I can tell people about it. right? And one of my favorite episodes on this was uh, the one on Cloud Spanner. To start with, because we had the PM, uh, Deepti Shravastiva, uh, and she she did an amazing job. Also, especially she was about to have a baby, which yes. was amazing. And we're like, really, like if you don't want. And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah no, I'm gonna make it. It's like, okay, perfect. So uh, sh she did an amazing job. And also she was able to tie it back to well, Spanner was an internal thing at Google, and how it went from a project to something like. Spanner as a service internally, and then how we make that into something public on Google Cloud Spanner. And that perspective of the project uh, that allows you to see not only the features, but why it got to be the way it is, uh, is something that only really product managers or engineers that have been working in the project for a long time can give. So that, that was an amazing episode for me. Yeah, I thought that episode was pretty great, too. And yeah. she's so clear in the way she explains it, especially when she covers things like the CAP theorem and how that's related to Spanner. It was great. Yeah, that was really, really good. Mark, what about you? Uh, cool. So I'll take a different tack as well. Um, so we we technically started this back in 2016, but we did eh, three or four episodes on SRE and SRE culture here at Google mm. and outside. So we had Paul Newson back again, our SRE advocate. He came back to talk about SRE after he'd finished his rotation. But then we also went to CRE, so the Customer Reliability Engineering, which is the, the more public-facing or the customer-facing side of the SRE culture that we have here at Google. Um, so we had Luke Stone on, uh, who's the Director of Customer Reliability Engineering, to talk about the CRE platform. We had uh, William Bolnell come from Home Depot, who's the customer side. He, basically, they are a company that uses our CRE and their experience. We got put sort of both sides of that. I, I personally found it really interesting to learn more about how we do site reliability engineering. What does that actually mean for our products when we start talking about like service level objectives and service level agreements? And like from a customer perspective, if I'm building a product, I need to think about 
how much uptime do I have to have for this thing? And does it correlate with the uptime that I'm getting from the products that I'm using? And how do those things interrelate? Um, how do I deal with failure, knowing that failure is just a, like something that is always going to happen? And like, how do I deal with that? And postmortems and all the cool stuff that I think comes along with that. I found that a really interesting, like almost philosophical, technical discussion. Nice. Well, any honorable mentions? Well, Melanie, what's your favorite? You're well, actually, talk- yeah. I talked about the Pokemon Go. That was one of mine. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that was definitely. I'm going to go with an honorable uh, mention to Paul Wilson because we have a category on him, so we should. <laughs> it's the only he's person been on, that, he's been on that like has three a or four times, three yeah. times, three times, four times. I think I don't know if it's three or four times, but there's a category Paul Newson on the. On we gotta the make we gotta make like some coats like they do with SNL when you've been on it for eight times or something like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, blazer. <laughs> like the Steve Martin yeah. Club or something. Uh, so, one question I have for the two of you, I'm going to throw out there. We didn't really plan on this one, but what's one of your favorite episodes doing together? Like what, what's one of those good memories back in the day or funny moments or funny experiences when you were doing the messages podcasts? we were sending each other when we were interviewing Vince Cerf were hilarious. That was pretty amazing. Especially because I was staying up late for this interview. Cause I, was, I was in Paris after doing Cloud Next Paris. So I was destroyed. Uh, Cloud Summit Paris, I was destroyed. He was waking up really early because like he was in Australia. Yep. <laughs> and still we were able to keep the energy and like just re- sincerely have a great time. And yeah, that's like kind of energy that I'm missing now. But there's also from previous years when we interviewed John Wilkes. Oh, yes. That was a great interview. So uh, John Wilkes, uh, he's one of the guys that wrote the paper on Borg, which is the system that we use internally, that it's kind of like Kubernetes, the internal Google Kubernetes. Uh, that interview was amazing also. Uh, Partly because Mark was incredibly excited, and it was kind of like <laughs> taking Mark to like uh, Disneyland. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was very similar to that. It was really, really good. Yeah. Do you remember what you were thinking when you first started this, like your very first episode? And you know, did you did you have any sense of where you were going to take this, or that this was going to really hang in there? How did do you yeah, remember? We thought this that? was going to be amazing. We were we were very you sure about that. Absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was just, right. I was yes. channeling my internal Vince Cerf. Is what yes, I was doing. Absolutely. It was it was really interesting because it it really felt like a personal project more than uh, it was really Mark and I we're gonna make this happen and we started from scratch with basically just like the okay from Greg but that was pretty much it yeah we didn't have the okay from marketing we yep. didn't have the okay from anyone else we forgot to ask we forgot to ask we, we just, just made yeah. it happen just and then it. and then at some point people were like wait like you know you need to go through processes right they were like oh Um, yeah oh yeah oh sure (laughs) okay (laughs) so from very early on it felt like a very very personal thing that we were both really into make it happening but at the same time i was slightly concerned about how are we going to make this happen every single week and and by the end i really feel like we ended up like yeah it just happens. Yeah. Yeah. well the the one thing i want to bring up that a lot of people may not know this is not your full-time job uh, all three of you are very um, full-time developer advocates out on the road, creating content, you know, doing all the things. And you happen to do a podcast that we could easily say is a full-time job, but you all somehow do it. I don't know how you make it happen, to be honest. I don't now, think we should, I think I think we should it, tell Greg. I don't know I don't how you think, do it. No. <laughs> yeah, we won't tell you the secret sauce. Uh, uh, okay, well, that's fine. Yeah. But, um, I think that one of the secret sauces is uh, we have now we have editors, and yep. it takes a lot of time off our hands, which is very nice. Yeah. Yeah, so, so uh, actually that's an interesting point. Like You go back to the beginning. Like we started this, we did everything. We did the editing, we wrote the site, we did all that stuff, all ourselves. Um, and what's been great is working here and with the team, Greg, and as it's grown in its success and it's done really well, more and more people have come on board to help us uh, grow it further. Um, so the support has been excellent. I, th- I think that's probably been the biggest indicator. But yeah, I, actually, funny story. I was You were talking about how when you were like, oh, you know, maybe don't do it weekly. Like, you know, that's a concern <laughs> yeah. and stuff. And in the beginning, like we were like, let's try this out and see how it goes and that kind of stuff. And so at one point, I remember, do you remember when you and I, Francesc, we said, oh, maybe we'll take August off. We'll just oh, take yeah. some time off. We'll <laughs> yeah. just, hey, Greg will be fine with that. It'll be fine. That and, was fun. And I will never forget the look on your face. <laughs> yeah. When I was a like, tear hey, rolled down my cheek. Yeah, I was like, hey, Greg, do you mind if we just took a, a month off? We were probably six months to a year into the podcast, something like that. And I was like, do you mind if we just took a month off and just had some time off? And the, the color like just drained <laughs> from your face. And you're like... So is there any way you could not do that? <laughs> yeah. That would be great. I use Thanks. words like momentum. momentum. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
I thought, but I really appreciate you guys st- stuck in there. So. That, that was when we realized that all of a sudden it was not like our personal project anymore, but like people depended on this to yeah. happen. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh, now we need to make it happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know, you get addicted to seeing those charts go up yeah. into the right, oh, yeah. and uh, you know, not share too many stats, but I think it's super impressive. I think total downloads is approaching a million at this yep. point, and that's going to be. We might have to have you back for that milestone. I'm totally happy with that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got any time for a free lunch, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, well, side note: yeah. it is Saturday morning, and I didn't had I didn't had neither free breakfast nor free lunch. We'll get I'm just there. saying. We'll I'm just there. saying. Okay, yeah. there's still time. We're slave drivers. That's how <laughs> okay, it works. Okay. So normally we also do cool things of the week on the podcast. I think this is probably a wonderful opportunity to sort of just take a, a retrospective on GCP and talk about what have been your favorite announcements or new products or just things we've been up to here at GCP. Greg, I'll put you on the spot. Go on. Uh, um, you had to pick maybe even one or two things. What would have been your favorite? Gosh, well, I've been here three and a half years. I don't know. There's so many. There's so many launches that have happened. Spanner's one I'm was especially excited about. Uh, I have a pretty extensive background in databases and have lived in the world of you know sharded MySQL and mm-hmm. trying to do things like that. And you know, Spanner is is an amazing easier path for those type of worlds. Uh, all of the EML stuff is super exciting to me. I didn't have a lot of knowledge in it. I love that we have the story from TensorFlow, the you know very vibrant open source community, to the ML APIs with you know pre-trained models, the uh, ML engine to go do your own. And, and I think there's a ton of potential there, and I'm very excited about it. Even some of the the things that are sometimes uh, not the shiny objects, but you know things that we're doing with virtual machines continues to excite me. Preemptible VMs. Uh, are amazing. Uh, you, you can get an incredible amount of computing power at a very low price, as long as you just account for the preemptibility mm-hmm. of it, uh, which is not that hard. Start times, all that. I don't know. I I'm continue to be excited about all of it. Yeah, I'm gonna look at you, Francis. <laughs> I'm gonna go with uh, Go One Dot Eight on a pension, just because. Now that I don't work at Google, I can <laughs> say it. It took so long that finally, <laughs> when it happened, I was like, "Yes, finally." I know why it took so long, and it totally makes sense. Like there was a lot of engineering effort going behind, so in the future we much easier to go. Well, go on the night, go on the ten, but it took long time, and I feel like that was a moment where it's like, okay, yes, I finally I'm happy, and the whole Go community all of a sudden was like, oh, oh, so yeah, Google actually cares about App Engine for real. So I was very very happy, but being able to say it publicly, really. Yeah. What's been your favorite, Melanie? Well, more recently, the fact that the GPUs are cheaper. That was definitely a nice Mm. announcement to see. I mean, for the research community in particular, GPUs are extremely popular, and that's that's a big deal. Yeah. I don't think anyone's going to be surprised by my answer. It's basically the continual improvement and the community and basically everything that's happening around Kubernetes. Uh, For a project that's been around two, three years, uh, this year has seen a huge skyrocket in amount of involvement from outside sources, uh, the amount of uh, investment Google's put in, the new features that have come out that's just very exciting. Yeah, and this year I've started to get way more involved in the project too, <laughs> more out of necessity than anything else. I mean, just the it's overall great. health of that community oh, and, the, and the, the tone it's of it, it's it's just a, f- a fun project to be part yeah. of. Yeah, so. so super, like, I just, oh my God, yeah. Well, I think we're getting close to time. I know we, we want to usually wrap up with a, giving everybody an opportunity to do a little plugging, so... Francesc, anything you want to share before we so, close you out? So, yeah, I keep on doing Just for Funk. So if you want to keep on listening to my voice regularly, I keep on doing Just for Funk. And I just recently created a Patreon, uh, which is a new experience for me. And people are now giving me money. Hey. Nice. I know. It's it's weird. Uh, but, yeah, other than that, um, I if you're really curious about what I'm doing, just find me on Twitter, and I've been tweeting about like uh, on Medium too, like what I'm gonna be doing in the future and stuff. And if you're curious about machine learning on source code, uh, read it and come talk to me because I'm interested in talking to you. What's your Twitter handle? Uh, Francesc. F R A N C E S C. There you go. <laughs> Greg, you got anything you want to plug? Uh, just this team. Super proud of this team. Uh, it's fun to be part of and. Appreciate you, uh, you all inviting me to be part of this today. Even though I, I had to set an alarm for a Saturday morning, which felt <laughs> very wrong, but it was well worth it. This is a lot of fun. Do I get, do I get to come on other ones, or do I have to wait two more years? You have to wait two more years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. We, we got a wait list. We got a bouncer at the door. I understand. It's, I understand. Not with those shoes. <laughs> 
I, I actually want to add uh, the fact that uh, on all of the episodes that we had, uh, there was a lot of the episodes that were colleagues from our team. Yep. And that was really amazing. It really felt good to have every single developer advocate from the team or almost, almost all of them. Almost, almost. almost all of them. Yeah, we've been adding a lot lately, so oh yeah, uh, it's been hard to keep up. There's been quite a quite a few for sure. Got to get a couple more in. Mark, what about you? I have nothing to plug. Nothing. Everything's been great. I'm just actually, you know what? You know what? I have to plug. <laughs> Melanie, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. Yes, um, absolutely. Francesc, I definitely gonna miss you, and I have I do miss you. But Melanie, it's it's a it's a delight and a pleasure to have you on with me now. So I'm super excited to see what 2018 has in store for us. Me too. I'm definitely excited about what we've got coming up. There's a lot of content that I want us to cover, and we oh, yeah. will definitely cover GCP, but we will also push into some other things that are around machine learning. I know some things that are coming. I'm very very excited too. Me too. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, guys. I know it was an early morning, but now I think it's time for us to wrap up and get some food. Yes. Awesome. Cool. I brought the credit card. <laughs> awesome. Thank you all. See ya. And that's it. Sheesh. That's that's our wrap up for the year. I was It was fun to do that. And we had to do that on a Saturday morning because of all the conflicts that were going on with everybody's schedule. Yeah, it was a really good chat and a good chance to get together the old band and reminisce about what's been happening in 2017. Completely agree. All right, so question of the week. Mark, what's one of your highlights of 2017? Ooh, so many good moments. Uh, Melanie joining me on the podcast, clearly. Uh, that is a highlight. Well, definitely, Miss Francesc, it's wonderful to have you on board now. Another highlight for me, though, I want to mention is that I started actively getting involved with the Kubernetes ecosystem. That, for me, was, was a particular highlight. I've got a pull request. It's been merged into Kubernetes. It happened sort of late this year. I've started to do some more work in there. I've been talking about Kubernetes for a long time, but I wanted to help get the experience better around uh, Seek API Machinery is the special interest group, uh, basically around extending Kubernetes. And so I have some PRs and some friction logs that I've, I've submitted to that for basically just like documentation, getting started experiences, like how do I get the developer experience to be better? And it's been a really lovely way to get involved in the community. My, my PRs right now are really just like not necessarily code, it's like readmes and putting extra docs on things in the Go code, like really, like really light touch sort of stuff, but it definitely seems to be making a difference, which is lovely. So just really getting involved with that project and getting started on it. Good. Uh, yeah, it's been open source, man. So cool. Open source is really good. I, I'm a big fan. What about you? What, what fun stuff would you think has been particularly special for you in 2017? You know, in terms of 2017 for me, definitely a highlight is the fact that I started with Google. And the other highlight is uh, the fact that I'm working with you on the podcast. Although I know we've talked about that, that so though. many times that I'm feeling <laughs> like maybe we're forcing ourselves into being that that's a highlight and this is a good thing. <laughs> Maybe this is reverse psychology. No, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. As long as we keep saying it, then it must be true. We'll just keep saying it and eventually we'll feel that way. No, it's it's good. And i say the other highlight was uh, end of last week at NIPS, uh, one of the workshops I was in, the best speaker for me was Heaven Gamara. I hope I'm saying her name right. She is the first deafblind graduate of Harvard Law School. Uh, and she is out there fighting for disability rights and she gave the most eloquent speech on thinking about accessibility in tech. And one of the things in particular that she really wanted to stress was when you are thinking about designing technology, think about it from this inclusion standpoint. Don't think about having different tech for different types of people, one tool for everybody. And I really appreciated her sharing you know, her perspective and, and kind of getting that point across. So if you haven't heard of her, I would highly recommend looking her up uh, and looking at talks that she's given. And that is my highlight for the 2017. Well, uh, Melanie, thank you again for joining me on the podcast today and for the end part of 2017. I'm looking forward to uh, what 2018 is going to bring for both of us. Yeah, we've already got a lot of ideas of things we want to talk about in the new year, which I'm really looking forward to. But in, before we get to that, of course, uh, I want to wish everybody a good holiday. Yes, have a good break. Hope everyone gets a nice rest, eat lots of food. We'll be back after time. the new year for sure. We'll be back, yeah. I think, within the first week or two. But have a good holiday for you, Mark. I hope you have a good time with the family. Thank you. And uh, thanks to all our listeners for enjoying our podcast in 2017 and, and listening to it. We all we love having you listen and send us comments and emails. It's always appreciative when we, we run into you in places and also just hear from you as well. All right. That's all we got. We'll hear and talk to everybody in 2018. See you all next year. 